Hey guys, Mike V from Reliable Automotive Equipment. Today we're working on a new video on the carbon unit A52001 slash A. Okay, so after doing the uh, aluminum stud setting that we went on, we're actually going to be working on the, on the sheet of calls for a tension stud, which is rivet ex extraction studs. So we're gonna be doing a six millimeter and it calls for stainless steel on stainless steel on the chart. The amperage setting is gonna be set at 600. We just dial that into 600. Our timer is gonna be set at 30 milliseconds. And we're gonna check our, uh, our gas time is still set at one second, which we have set in here. And we show that the gas is on with the tank showing in the screen. The volume, we're gonna check that. And we still have reverse polarity set up on the system for doing the studs. All right, I wanna check my gas, pull the trigger. We're again, we're right at 21. Gonna show you guys a little bit of a trick right now to make this a little bit more simpler. Take a little piece of masking tape and what I'm going to do is set this right the top of the masking tape right about 21. And if I wrap this around the gauge, now, no matter where I stand, when I pull the trigger, I can see my lid right there, I'm good. Because 21 is going to be the same setting for everything that you do on this. Having the masking tape up there just makes it very simple. Stand in the way, hit the trigger, you know you have your gas on, very simple. So what we're gonna be doing today is rivet extraction. And we are going to be using the bigger pins that we have inside of the box assembly. There's four millimeter, five millimeter, and six millimeter. Today we're gonna to be doing a six millimeter stud. These are made out of stainless steel. These are designed to go on top of the head of a self-piercing rivet. And our holders. Okay, we have the holders out here. These are four millimeter, five millimeter, and six millimeter. So I wanna take one of the studs, put the correct one in. When we go to install these, this becomes a little bit different than when we were doing the regular studs. There is no screw adjustment on the bottom of this. This is bottomed out, and this is the way that it ends up sticking out. This is actually engineered the company that makes these studs for the rivet extraction are actually designed for this piece so that when we put this into the gun assembly and we snug this up and now we're going to take our tip for this is going to look totally different than before so that when we turn this on or we get this turned into place if we look across the top of it we are still gonna have our two millimeter projection that it calls for on the chart. And as we go through the rest of our settings on the chart, we are still calling for a one millimeter lift. So again, we're just gonna check zero to zero on the scale on the back. Flip the gun over so that we have the one showing and verifying that number six on the resilience scale is still over top of the white line. So when we go to do these, because we are doing stainless steel on top of stainless steel, and we are using gas when we use stainless steel. If we are welding on a regular steel stud as a replacement to the vehicle, the chart actually shows no gas on a regular steel stud. But on stainless steel, it does require gas. So this will throw a couple of sparks out when you do this. If you notice, the, the actual nose cone is different than the other one, instead of a, being a nice big round one, this allows you get into a tighter area, and now we need to put the end of the stud directly on the head of the rivet. And if we had the big round nose cone on there, you would never be able to find that perfectly. So what I'm going to do is just throw a little glove on here to keep the sparks from coming out. But I'm gonna show you placement of this on the panel that I'm gonna go right on top of the stud, push down on it. This gives us decent stability this way, but be careful of turning the gun this way because if you turn the gun a little bit, you're gonna weld on the shoulder of the bolt, the extraction stud, 
instead of in the center of the rivet. So I'm just going to put this right over the top, push down, and then give it a shot, and then pull straight up. So what that does now is weld that on the head of the rivet. And what I have here set up is the Express 800 with the extraction head on it, which is basically looks like a blind rivet head with just a much bigger opening. Instead of trying to hold the, the collar of the rivet down when you're setting a blind rivet, this is going to be big enough so that the actual self-piercing rivet will actually be able to be pulled up through there. So on this, we're just going to put on. And there is the rivet that has now been extracted from the panel. So with the rivet being extracted, if we do that over a complete plate, this is actually what it's going to look like. Your top plate actually has the hole in it from the rivet coming out. Your bottom plate, remember on a self-piercing rivet, never actually ends up going through the whole panel as a whole. This is what gets pushed out as the self-piercing rivet is being set. And we'll get a close-up on this to actually show how the rivet, once it goes in, actually gets splayed outwards as a friction fit for holding the panel on. So part of the purpose of the rivet extraction is we are not damaging the second plate as we take the rivet out. There's going to be times where you're doing a box structure that you cannot get the rivet gun on to end up pushing the rivet out. And the manufacturers are requiring for a rivet extraction so that it does not end up damaging any part of the second plate. Whereas this can be reformed and then replaced with whatever rivet goes with their repair procedure. One important thing to throw in here when you're welding the extraction studs on for the self-piercing rivets weld your first stud on and then try and pull it out with the rivet extraction tool. This gives you a chance to adjust your settings on the machine if the stud did not weld on properly like you wanted to. So you don't want to weld on 50 extraction studs and have 50 of them fail on doing the pull out. So weld on one of them, do a test pull on it, make sure it comes out okay. Your numbers are good, continue on with it. All right, guys, that wraps up the carbon unit. Any questions, give us a call at the number on the screen or on our website. Thanks, guys. Have a great day.